came up with one really good idea. It is similar to a shaky head. If any of you are familiar with that. Basically what it is, instead of having a rubber worm on your shaky head jig, you're going to be able to tie a fly. And the jig head's actually quite a bit different and the way you tie the fly is quite a bit different. It's very creative, and I'm going to share that with you guys right now. Okay, so I started off tying salmon and steelhead flies. And by no means am I a good tie flyer. Fly tire? Yeah. Um, but I really like tying the, the woolly booger. And the woolly booger was the closest thing that I could come up with to a shaky head worm. That's the skinniest, longest profile for a fly that is similar to a shaky head worm. So the first problem I came up with was how to get it on the jig head. So started from scratch. Got a 90 degree jig head hook and then I had to recreate the jig head, the, the lead part of it. Okay, so how I came up with the shape and the design for the jig head, I needed something flexible that would still act as a weedless guard and something that I could actually tie a woolly booger pattern on and I found these skinny little bars in the jeweler aisle at Hobby Lobby and in order for this to work I had to shape my little piece of clay which is the exact same well I wouldn't say exact same but similar size to a previous previously made shaky head jig so my idea here is if I use a similar size piece of clay the lead displacement or the clay displacement or space displacement in the mold will come up to be the same weight one eighth in my design so first, I used a little bit of UV cement, head cement, whatever they call it, to lock my little bar in place because that is the angle I want it to sit on the hook. So now that glue is set, it's hard, and I have this. Next, I have to shape my lead <laughs> around the hook and get my pattern that I want. And I'm not actually going to go through here and show all the little itty bitty steps I take to get the, the shape, but you can see here. You just pack it around. Any of you guys can do this at home. You get whatever shape that you want for your jig head. You can make this anything you want. And then what you do is you have to set the clay so it's hard. And you take your little toaster oven that you have set up in your garage you can see I've got a little toaster oven. And you set this little sucker to four, well, no, we'll do 200. You stick your jig in there. You let it sit for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes until the clay is hard. 
Okay, so once you pull your clay out of the oven, it should be hard. Now, it's not going to be perfect because you're probably going to have some thumbprints or something in there. Or it's just, it's not going to be perfect. Not from the clay. So what I ended up doing is after it's dry, it's very easy to take a piece of sandpaper and smooth out all the fingerprints or anything that you have it. Because after this step, we're going to put it in a silicone mold and it will pick up everything. You will have thumbprints, you'll have every little defect in it unless you go through with a fine tooth comb. So once you get your desired design, this is the one that I came up with. I picked this design shape because it's extremely flat on the bottom which is going to move a lot of water while it's falling. And anybody that uses shaky heads will tell you the slower the drop, the better it is. It gives the, fi uh, the fish a chance to see the bait as it's falling, and it'll also kind of move and wiggle on its way down. If it just drops straight down, it's just not natural. So the slower the fall, the, the better it is. And uh, generally you want to fish with a... 16th ounce shaky head just because of that reason it falls slower but since I have such a flat base here and it's going to be made out of fly material there's going to be a lot more water resistance and it will naturally fall slower anyway and I'll show you guys on a demonstration video my 1 8th ounce jig head falls slower than a regular 16th ounce shaky head. So I think it's better just by that. You could cast these a lot better and it drops slower. It's easier to fish and it's heavier so you can feel the bottom a lot better. But uh, before you pour the jig or before you pour the silicone resin there is one important step that I like to do because this is just soft clay and I don't want it to stick to the silicone. I don't think it will. But I take a little bit of clear nail polish and I just coat it in a very thin layer and that will smoothen out any extra imperfections. So if there is anything left from the sandpaper you just put a little bit of this nail polish on there and it will take out or smoothing out everything just a, that much more. Let that dry for about five minutes. And then I will show you guys how I make the box for the mold, what I use to pour the mold. And. Okay, so now. We need to make a box for our mold and what I use doesn't need to be fancy just a sheet of this whatever it is a foam board poster board it's like a buck two dollars at most at Walmart or something but yeah you use this and it helps to have a square Okay, so I'm actually going to put two jigs inside of this mold. So instead of just having a shaky head style jig head, I'm also making a streamer style one too. So you can see it's going to be a fish head and you're going to be able to tie a streamer on the back of this. So it'll still be a weedless, but it's going to be a streamer style instead of your soft plastic. You probably still run soft plastic on this too, but yep. So I'm going to do the shaky head style and the fish head style. Bait fish head? Yeah, we'll call it bait fish head. I don't know. We'll call it something. We got our two. We'll do three by four. It doesn't need to be a big mold. Just 
just enough room because you only get so much of this stuff. The more of it you waste, the less molds you can make. So I'm going to... What did I say? It was three by four. We want... Let's do a two inch high. So what you're going to do, because I want the box to be two inches high, three inches on the ends, four inches for the length. So I'm going to start by making my height. So then this is the part you got to pay attention to. We want three inches for the end. So we'll do that. Then you want four inches and then three and then four. Because what you're going to do is you're going to cut it halfway through the poster board and fold it. So you only have one piece, but you'll still have four sides. So three So now we got our box. So we got three inches, four inches, three inches, four inches. Then we're going to cut it out. Okay, so we got our piece cut out. And this is the important part. You don't want to cut all the way through. You just kind of want to score it enough to where you could fold it three times. So now we have our box. And then what you do is take some very expensive scotch tape. For the price and how easy it is to make it, it works pretty good. I've seen a couple of other people do it on YouTube a while back, but I can't remember who that was. Anyways, you got your box. Next thing that we need to do, stuff the bottom of the box with clay. Okay, so this part is pretty important because the clay is going to be your impression surface. Um, so what we're doing is we're going to pour half of it once the silicone cures then we'll flip it over take the clay out and then pour the rest of it so as you can see i have some clay in here already hopefully it shows up the lighting is kind of putting a shadow on it but it's very lumpy the clay is very lumpy so what i ended up doing we're going to have our impression surface right here and you can use like a rolling pin or something. And honestly perfect scenario you would create a big enough slab where you could set the box on top of it trace it on the inside then you could cut it out and just set it in there then our impression side
Let's see. You can see in there, it's pretty flat. It's not ever going to really necessarily be perfect. But what we do with this extra little pit, bit of clay, we need to fill in the cracks. Because when we pour silicone, it's going to seep down those cracks if it's not sealed. Um, take both of our jig heads, place them in there. You want to put them kind of close to the side, but you want to leave enough room where you can make a funnel. Because if you put it all the way up close to the top, you're going to have a very short funnel to pour your lead. Let's see. Put that one in there kind of at an angle. So, as you can see, oh, let me just do this. I got them laid in there like so, and then I'm going to push them down into that, that layer of clay to make the impression. Now it's poor, important you only push in 50% of everything. Because if you push it further, then the silicone will cover it. And you won't be able to get your hook back out without cutting the silicone. The idea of this is to get two identical sides of the mold. Since I pushed, I don't know if you guys could see with the shadow on there, but when I pushed it in, it kind of left a little bit of a dent around the outside of this shaky head jig. It looks like the fish head came out pretty good, but I need to fix that shaky head jig. Alright, take this thing out of the holder, show you guys what we're looking at. So, oh. you can see they are halfway in that first piece of clay. Only about half of the hook, half of everything. That's actually a little bit more than half. And that'll show up in the mold. But that's okay, since that part's not important to the lead we can cut that out later but the biggest part is making sure that only 50 percent of the jig heads and that eye hole or eyelet is in the clay and that's the best i've been able to do i've made three of these but this one hopefully is my final product hopefully i'll be able to use and manufacture these and maybe if some people want to sample them they can maybe request some and I can send them out okay so for pouring the mold this might sound funny to some people but it's called max molds or mold max smooth on Mold Max 60. It's a silicone based mold. And I know some people think, oh, you're going to pull melted lead into silicone. Yeah, that'll work. But it's actually a high temperature silicone. And you could pour as many times as you want. And the silicone is perfect every single time. It's pretty good stuff. And. I've actually watched a lot of other videos of people using this, and I do 
do not have the proper equipment. So I'm just going to wing it. So far winging it has done fine for me. So if you guys have a fat bank account, I do not. I'm broke. But you guys can go and get a vacuum chamber because everybody's stirring this. Sorry, a little interruption from the mother-in-law. Yep, I am making a, ba a, a business, not in my own garage, my mother-in-law's garage. So if I could pull this off, and any of you are sitting out there thinking, I want to make a business, you could do it. I encourage you guys, don't be lazy. So, it helps a lot. For when it is dry to pull it apart from the clay if you get a little bit of Vaseline or probably could use oil of some sort. Vaseline works really well. You don't need a lot, just a tiny bit, like a softer brush and you spread it on over there. You want it on the clay, on the sides, over your jig head, but be careful if you put too much Vaseline on your brush then it clumps up on your jig head and then that will show up in the mold. So you use as little as possible around your impression surface. The clay doesn't matter so much. But everywhere where you want detail, you want to have as thin a layer as possible for the Vaseline. All right, so I got that and I ended up mixing another thing of silicone and I think in the video it, it ended right when I said the ratio. So it's 300, no, it's 100 to 3. And I end up not following that because I don't have the fancy scale to weigh it. So I pretty much just did half a cup of the red silicone. And then I did about a tablespoon of the blue. This stuff comes out blue. You can kind of see it in there. That's the curing agent. And it's... They say it's very important to get the mixture right, but as far as I'm concerned, all it does is speeds up the time. So the more of the blue stuff you put in, the curing agent, the faster it will cure. And I think the harder it will set up. So if you want a softer mold, I think you use less. I might be wrong on this. But it will take longer for sure to set up. So I got that all mixed in. And they also, I'm doing everything so half ass, but it all comes out just fine. You don't need the fancy scale. They also say to get a vacuum chamber because you want to suck out all of the bubbles out of the silicone mix. So you don't end up with bubbles in your mold. And it sounds smart. And it sounds like a good idea. Oh, there is one more thing. You want to poke a couple of holes into your clay. Because those are going to be like pins. So it lines back up right. You can use anything. So, I don't know if it shows up in here, but I put five holes in the clay. That way when it cures, it's going to leave five little pins. So I, I got it Vaseline. I got the holes. 
I'm supposed to vacuum seal or vacuum chamber this to get the bubbles out, but bubbles float anyway, and since our impression surface is down, you won't end up with any bubbles on your impress impression surface. Alright, sorry guys, uh, phone ran out of storage again, so I wasn't able to keep the video of me taking the mold apart, but all you missed was me just pushing everything out the other side, it just slides out of the box, and then you just peel the clay off of your mold, you leave these guys in here, you don't take those out. And then you just put your box back in, like so, and it should fit perfectly back in there. And then take your Vaseline and you go over it with a really light coat again, just like we did the first time. And then the same mix, I did about a half cup, half red solo cup with about a tablespoon of the curing agent and just gonna pour it back in again and that is going to finish the other half of the clamp mold I think it's dry it's been a couple of hours Like I said, you could just push it out the bottom. It doesn't stick. Look at that. It just looks like a brick. Can't really tell. You can see a little bit of the line separating the two. But should be able to just pull it apart. Yep. Just like that. Boom. Just keep on going from one side. Awesome. Yep, so see when you poke the holes in the clay, it'll make one side with pins and one side with holes. So it'll always line up perfectly again. So now we don't really care about these anymore. Holy smokes, this thing got messy while I was making this. All right, so now the next thing to do is to make your funnel so you can pour your molds. And what I've been doing, you just take a razor blade. I find the very top. And you gotta remember, wherever your funnel comes into your mold, that is where you are going to cut it off from. So try to find a spot on the bottom where you'll be able to, once you pour your lead, you'll be able to sand off whatever extra you don't want. So it's possible, or as small as possible up here at the top. And I did two lines, one on the left, one on the right. That way I could see on the ends where they are going to connect and then I'll cut that section of it out and you're going to have to hold your blade at kind of a weird angle because you got to cut deeper on the top and as shallow as possible where the dig head hits okay so once you cut one side and it looks pretty good see it's not terrible then you want to put your mold together and so you can get your funnel to line back up. You just kind of want to cut in the other side so it can line up good. That way it doesn't look like a total idiot did it. Alright. And then it looks like about right. Okay. Here's City yeah. Bike. Welcome to City Bike. Alexa, shut up. Goodbye. Thanks for using City Bike.
I don't even think I said her name. Do you guys hear me say her name? No. All right, so we got both of the funnels in there. I hope that shows up good on the video. Now, when I put these two together, you got yourself a nice little funnel. And might as well throw a hook in and see how this works. Okay, so now that I have everything made and set up together, I'll show you how quick and easy it is to make a jig head. So you get your hook, you get your little bar, you set those in your, your mold, close it, then Pour your lead. Oops. Yeah, that one came out really good. So that's how fast it is to pour it. Then sand off what you just clipped. Like so. Plug in your, that's still really hot, so your fluid bed, give that a little swirl, and that came out really good. And that's how quick and easy it is. Oh, I almost forgot a step. there's a moth all right I just decided while that is sitting in the oven I'm going to show you guys how I make my fluid beds I've got four of them they're super easy to make so I'll, oh it's about $14 per fluid bed plus eight dollars for the pump but if you guys want to see how I make these it's very simple, very quick, and cheap. Uh, I will leave a link on this video. You guys can go ahead and click on that and watch how I make these if you'd like. So, I hope it's helpful. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was very uh, influential. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you like the product. Um, I actually ended up making two different types of jigs. I got the fly tying one. I think I'll just call it the bottom bug. It's like mixed between a woolly booger and a shaky head. And then I actually went and put a spring in the mold. That way you can fish it with a regular worm, like a regular shaky head. So if you really like this jig head, you can still fish it with the regular worm or you could get the kind where you could tie your own fly on it. Um, I hope you guys really like the video. Stick around and watch part two because I'm going to show you how to tie this fly. And I think in that video, eh, we'll see what I'll do with that video. But uh, I'm going to make a part three of what this looks like underwater. And maybe I'll even throw in uh, catching some fish with it. We'll see. Um, but I hope you guys like the video. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Um, leave some comments. Give us some feedback. Tell me what you think. Also, I'm going to be getting a lot more powder coating colors. So if you guys are interested in picking these up from me, let me know what kind of colors you want. Because I found a, a powder co coating company and they've got a lot of colors. I know Protec does powder coating uh, or powder coat for jig heads, but it's you get like two ounces, for like eight bucks is kind of a rip off. But uh, I'm going to be buying the this powder by the pound.
So let me know what kind of, kind of colors you guys want. I've got enough space for four colors right now. Uh, I'll probably make like, I'll probably do eight total colors. So let me know what, what you guys want before I go and buy it. All right, thanks. Stick around.